God bless you today. What a beautiful day that the Lord has made. I am excited about this day. I'm excited about this opportunity. Another chance, another chance to walk through the word of God together. We thank God for this opportunity. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for who you are. You're awesome. You're magnificent. You're marvelous. You're all-knowing, almighty. You're everywhere at the same time. You're sovereign. God, we bless you. We thank you for this privilege we now enjoy. Thank you for forgiveness for our sins and cleansing from all unrighteousness. Thank you for every person that shall view and is viewing, that shall listen. Give us ears to hear and hearts to receive. Help us, O oh God, to digest this word, that it become a part of us, that is not for show, but that it might help us in our everyday life. Thank you again for the victory. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, welcome back to uh, this word session, Galatians chapter 6. Last time we got as far as verse number 10. Uh, just a brief week recap of last week's lesson. Uh, Paul writes to the Christians in Galatia. He says to them, uh, when you give, you give to those, uh, when you give, uh, make sure you give from a pure heart, a pure conscience. But he says, let those that are taught in the word communicate unto those that teach it in all good things. Those that bless you with the word of God, you ought to bless them with carnal things. Amen. And we taught that on last time. He says, because uh, whatever you sow is what you're going to reap. Be not deceived. God is not marked. What you plant is what you're going to harvest. If you give, Luke says, uh, Jesus, uh, rather, says in Luke's record of the gospel, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. I am so glad that I've learned and that others have learned how to sow into the lives of those that feed us. Amen. We don't have to ask for anything, but if you're faithful with the word and faithful to the word, God will bless somebody to bless you. That's encouragement for those who labor in the, in the gospel, who labor in the word. Don't look uh, for anything but expect something. That, that don't make sense to a lot of people. Don't look for anything but expect something. What do you mean? It doesn't always come the way you're looking for it. People to do this and do that. But God's got a way of just blessing you beyond compare. And so he, he says, whatever you sow is what you're going to reap. And thank God for those of us who know the power and secret behind giving. Can I tell you one more time? Giving works. Sow good seed in good ground, expect a great harvest. Did you catch that? Sow good seed in good ground, expect a great harvest. If the man or woman of God is feeding you, you ought to bless them is what Paul said. Paul said, not Pastor Nelson. Amen. And I thank God for those who do take time to bless their pastor. Amen. And, and the person that's feeding them. And so... He says, if you sow to the flesh, you shall have the flesh reap corruption. If it's all about you, if you're sowing to gratify the flesh, you just want to be pleased, corruption will be your end. He says, but if you sow to the spirit, honoring God, blessing God, doing the things of God, you shall reap life everlasting. Amen. And he encourages us. He says, watch this. Don't be weary in well-doing. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. We shall reap if we faint not. He says, while you're doing good, don't get discouraged. Don't let anybody discourage you from doing what you know is right and good. There are some people that are natural born haters. They hate to see you do good. They hate to see your prosperity from doing good. And a lot of times they will fight you. They will try to hinder you. They will place opposition and obstacles in your way. But you just keep doing what you know to do, that you know that God uh, caused you to do it. He's pleased with you doing it. it. You get, let me park here. You get tired. Let's be honest. You get tired and you will get weary. Yeah, life will do that to you. Uh, serving God will do that to you. I'm just being honest. Yeah, you, you get tired. I don't have anybody out there that, that, that's, that's honest that will honestly say, I, Pastor, I don't really get tired. Oh, yes, you do. This journey gets fatiguing sometimes. But he says, don't faint. Don't give in. Don't give up. Don't give out. Hang on in there. 
Because when the time is right, and see, that's the part that we don't know all the time when the season is in, when the time is right. But when the time is right, you shall reap. When it's your time, when it's your turn, when it's your season, nobody, not even the devil in hell, can stop the harvest from coming in. But it will only come in when the time is right, in due season. Are you with me? Now, he says, uh, as you have opportunity, do good unto all men, especially, verse number 10, especially those who are of the household of faith. We must make sure. See, it doesn't make any sense for me to go outside of my family and bless others and can't bless my family. Oh, help me teach. Yeah, it doesn't make no, any sense for me to be a blessing to a whole lot of other people. And I can't bless my wife. I can't bless my children, grandchildren. Lord, help me teach here. And then I'm out there stunting for the world and blessing. Up. No, he says, especially those of the household of faith. Here it is. Charity begins at home and then it spreads abroad. We must learn as the body of Christ to be a blessing to each other and then spread out and be a blessing to those who do not know our God. Are you with me? Especially those of the household of faith. Especially those who are holding on to God's unchanging hand. Especially the born again believers in Christ. If we can't be a blessing to each other, that's a sad testament to the world. Are you with me? I just, I'm just a firm believer that Christians ought to bless Christians, ought to love Christians, ought to encourage Christians first. You can't do for others what you don't do for yourselves. Are you with me? Then Paul takes another turn here. He moves from spiritual uh, help to material help. Now he, he closes and he's coming to the close of this, uh, this particular chapter. And he says, see how large a letter I have written unto you with mine own hands. A couple of things here. Paul says, see how large a letter. And, and the book of Galatians isn't large at all. But the proper translation is you see how I've written in large letters. I've used not small letters, but large uh, alphabets. That's what I'm using now. And the, the, the train of thought, uh, theological teaching says that Paul uh, his eyesight was getting a little dim now, so he had to write in larger letters so that he, he can, it could be legible to him. He said, see how large a letter I have written unto you with my own hand. The second thing is, he was used to dictating his letters to quote-unquote secretaries. He would, he would have the, the ministers that were under him to write exactly what he said and send the letters or carry the letters to the different churches, to the different regions. And so now he says, this time I'm not dictating, I'm writing it with my own hands. Are you with me? As many, now, now watch what he does now. He's talking about legalism. And we've got to be careful as the body of Christ that we don't fall into legalism. Let me, let me do it for a second and I'll, I'll bring it to you. As many as desire to make a show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, lest they only lest they should suffer persecution for the uh, cross of Christ. He says, now there are some that will, my God, to, to, to be praised, to get glory, uh, they will cause you and they will constrain you and they will compel you to be circumcised. Now, uh, circumcision indicated that you were a true Jew, a true follower of the law, a true student of the law, a true product of the law. And so Paul says there are those who are still operating in legalistic rules and regulations where it comes down to Judaism, which was the religion of that day of the Jew, Judaism, those Judaizers, they want you to make them look good. They compel you to get circumcised. He says they do that so that they won't have to suffer persecution for the cause of Christ. They negate their Christian calling so that they can look good in their eyes of all others that follow the law. Lord, help me teach here. There are people that want to, to get you as, uh, cause you to be their disciples. They don't want you to follow Christ, Lord Jesus. They want you to follow them. And our job as pastors and as ministers and as leaders in the body of Christ is not to draw people after us, but to point people to follow after Christ. They, we are 
we are only stewards, watch it, of Christ's disciples. Christ's disciples are under our care, under our nurturing hand, but they belong to him. People today, they want to make a good showing in the flesh. They want to say, I've got the biggest building. I've got the biggest and most fabulous uh, edifice. I've got the biggest choir. My pastor is the best. He drives this and he drives that. Uh, showing in the flesh is not about us. It's about him. He says they want you to be circumcised. Watch it now. He says that, that they, don't, they can escape. They don't want to identify with the cross. That's where uh, modern Christianity has ventured off into. We don't want to go where the cross is. We want the crown, but we don't want the cross. We want the glory, but we don't want the story of the cross. My, my God, we have to understand. You can't take the cross out of Christianity. The cross involves shame. The cross involves suffering. The cross involves sacrifice. The cross involves redemption and restoration. How dare you negate the cross of Christ in Christianity? Oh, my God. Some say, I don't preach the cross. I don't sing, keep me near the cross because it's shame. Well, the shame that Jesus went through is causing me to do what I'm doing today. Thank God for the cross. Thank God for the cross. The cross is the burden we bear to win lost souls. Jesus said, if any man come after me, let him deny himself. Oh, help me teach. Take up his what? Not his Mercedes, not his Lamborghini. Y'all ain't going to help me teach here. Not his Maserati, not, not his, come on, talk to me. Take up his cross, somebody say cross, and follow me. Thank God for the blessed things of life. But make sure when people see you, they can get a good view and a good image of the cross of Christ at Calvary. He died, y'all. He didn't die in a fabulous setting. He died on a rugged cross. Thank God. He says they don't want to suffer persecution for the cause of the cross of Christ. That, that's a stumbling block to many. That's a shameful event to many. But thank God I shout when I think about the cross of Christ. I got saved at the cross. Help me. At the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my sight. And now, oh good God, I'm happy all to thank God for the cross. Yeah, they, they want to make a showing in the flesh. They, you know, we have made the, 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 the ministry so elaborate where folk can come in and don't have to change. Y'all help me. There is no conviction. See, the cross brings conviction. You, you and I need to be a part of a fellowship. Yes, where we shout. Yes, where we praise God. Yes, where we feel good when we leave there. We are inspired and informed. But we do need a ministry that brings about conviction. See, if there's no conviction, there'll be no conversion. I don't think y'all hear me now. If there's no conviction, there'll be no conversion. Folk need to understand that salvation is free, but it's not cheap. Help me teach. I said salvation is free, but it sure enough ain't cheap. I know that's country, but why? Yeah, it costs God everything uh, to save our souls. He gave his only begotten son. We need to get back to the basic fundamentals of Christianity. He died that we might live. God gave, gave heaven's best for earth's worst. He bankrupt heaven so that we might be rich in grace and mercy. Are you with me? Oh, for the cross of Christ. It wasn't a pretty sight at Calvary. I told you before, and I'll tell you again. It was an ugly, demeaning sight. It was an uh, uh, ang anxiety time. It was, it was a demeaning time. Christ suffered that we might have life and have it more, y'all help me teach, more abundantly. Thank God for the, I'm not ashamed of the cross of Jesus Christ, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He lived, he died, I said he died, he was buried, and on the third day, he rose again. I don't know where we got off, but if people are going to be saved, it's through the cross of Calvary. It's not through health, wealth, and prosperity. That comes as a byproduct, help me teach, 
of us honoring and obeying God, but we got to get the horse before the cart now. We got to make sure that we direct people to the cross, to Christ, to the saving and redempting, redemptive work of Jesus Christ. Oh my God, he says they make a showing in the flesh. You know what? That's where the church has missed it. We want to make a showing in the flesh. Look at what I'm, what I'm wearing. Look at what's on my fingers. Look at what I'm driving in. Look at the square footage of my house. Get off of that. People are dying and going to hell. And, and the value of earthly possessions cannot bring them back from the borders of hell. Are you with me? We've got to make sure it's not us gratifying the flesh. We sit the pastor, we sit the leaders on a throne. Get off of that throne. Come down and humble yourself. Turn back to Calvary. Turn back to Jesus, his bleeding side. Turn back to the grace and mercy, oh my God, of, of God. He says, watch this, verse number 13. My God, he says, neither... They themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your... Don't you think everybody that with the D's and D's and D's are living what they're preaching? Y'all help me teach here. They want to put a burden, Jesus says, on you that they are not ready to... My God. Some folk, you just need to follow them home. Y all, y all, y all don't turn me off right here. Follow them home. You see, mm -hmm, yeah, we want to look all holier than thou and deep in front of you, but you follow them home. You just have a, a sidebar conversation with them. It ain't what they say in front of you. Uh -huh, it's what they say behind you. We must make sure that we don't glory in flesh, that we don't take advantage of God's people just to make us look good. You know, we, we, we are so busy counting members and we don't have disciples. Lord, help me teach. We are so busy investing in material possessions where the building and, and body of the church is called, but we don't invest in the lives of people. Oh, my God. D don't, make the, don't count the numbers. Make the numbers count. Are you, are you with me? I thank God I'd rather have five faithful, God-fearing, God-loving people than to have 5,000 people who don't even know who God is. Because at the end of the day, we got to stand before God and give an account of our stewardship. What did you preach and teach to my people? Did you lead them to me or did you lead them to yourself? At the end of the day, it's Christ Jesus who is our redeemer, is God who is our judge. It's the word of God that we'll be judged by, not by what church you are a member of, not by what you wrote in or lived in. Oh, it's the word of God that's the standard. Are you with me? And so he says, they don't keep the law. They, 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 yeah, they, they, they want to make a fair show in the flesh. They get circumcised, you know, they, they went to, and y'all know what circumcision is, don't make me get into that, but, but they got circumcised just to identify with that, that, that religion or that, that race, you know, uh, or, or some of them for manhood, they got circumcised. And, and you know what? A lot of people join the church just to say, I'm, I'm saved. That joining it doesn't make you saved. Are you hearing what I say? Because you're saved, you be a, become a part of a fellowship because you need a pastor, a leader to feed you with knowledge and understanding according to Jeremiah 3.15. But, but, but a lot of people, oh God, join a particular church to have a certain status. Can I teach deep here today? Y'all ain't got to like me, but respect what the word is saying. Yeah, you know, if I join that church, I'm on a certain level. Okay, we are better than those over there. And, and we, we do that. You should say what you want. I've been uh, in, in this world for a few minutes now, and, and I understand, and I've checked it out. I see, I survey, I inspect, I see how people become a part. You know, if you're a part of that church over there, they're poor. They don't have it going on. They don't have this type of ministry or this, that, and the other. But if you join... This church, I don't make me go there. Join this church, you know, you get to get elevated on a certain status. You know, all of us drive certain cars and certain quality of, of clothes we wear. And, and, you know, it's a fashion show on Sunday morning. Y'all help me teach. Yeah, and then, you know, we've got our primp and proper attitude when we come into the house of God and, 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 and all of this kind of stuff. But all that's going to perish along with us and we're going to perish along with it. Must be sincere. Must be honest before God. Must be genuine. Somebody said genuine. We must be Lord God, real. Are you with me? Got to keep it real. And so 
He says they don't keep the flesh, but they make you uh, keep the law, but they make you get circumcised so they can go and say, look, look how many followers I've converted. Look how many people I brought and bec they became uh, 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 in the religion of Judaism. Uh, he says that, that's, that's why they're doing it, to, to count the numbers and, and to bring accolades to themselves. And, and he says that, 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 you know what, that's shallow, that's hollow, it won't last. Are oh, y'all with me? Watch this. So Paul says this now. But God forbid that I should glory except in the cross of our Lord. He says, watch this, he, of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto them. Paul says, if I'm going to brag, oh, I'm going to brag in the cross. I'm going to boast in the cross. Are you hearing me? I'm not boasting. If anybody, and he, listen, if anybody had a right and a reason to boast, it was great old apostle Paul. Paul says, if, if I just wanted to brag, I'm of the tribe of Benjamin. Y'all ain't helping me. He says, I just want to brag. I've been educated at the feet of Gamaliel. He says, if I want to brag, I speak 14 languages and, and I master seven. If I wanted to brag, I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews. I'm a Pharisee. Y'all ain't saying that. If I wanted to brag, I, I, I've got so much I can brag about. He said, but I count all that as nothing but for the glory of God and for the sake of the cross of Christ. He says, I, the only way I brag is in the cross. I boast about what the Lord has done for me. And child of God and anybody else that's watching, let me tell you, you have nothing to brag on. What you have, somebody got a better one. Excuse me. What you live in, somebody's got a bigger one. What you're driving, somebody has a more expensive one. Uh huh. What you're wearing, somebody got better threads than what you got, baby. Let me tell you, it's not about that. How you whip and dip and, and fry and dye your hair, somebody doing it better than you. How you get your muscles all toned, somebody's got better muscles than you. Let me tell you, all of that will fade and the glory thereof will fade. Only what you do for Christ will last. Help me teach. And he says, watch this, if I glory, I glory in the cross. I brag about how he died for my sin. I brag about how I was no good on my way to hell. Thought I was right when I was wrong. I was blind, but now I see. I'm bragging because Jesus loved me. The cross represents how much God loves us. That's what I can, oh, he loved me. Oh, how he loved me. Oh, how he loved you and me. He gave his life. My God, oh, he, if nothing else, I can brag on the love. Doesn't God love us? I want to tell you, if you don't know it, he loves you. If nobody else ever tells you they love you, God has told you and he's telling you daily, I love you. And you've got to love him right back because he's just that kind. He's so good. He's just that kind of God. Glory, my God, in the cross. That's all I'm bragging. He said, I don't brag, but I brag in the cross. I boast in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's Lord. He's in charge. I thank God, oh God, for the cross of Christ. I thank God for the sacrificial gift, the redemptive work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Y'all, I wouldn't be standing here if it wasn't for the cross. I would not be having to, to, this privilege of speaking the word to you if it wasn't for the cross. Don't look at me. Look past me and see Jesus. Don't look at your leader. Look past them and see Jesus. If you can't see Jesus in and through your leaders, you're serving and following the wrong one. Take that to the bank. Come on now. You're serving and following the wrong one. He says, watch this. He says, by whom the world is crucified unto me. I'm dead, to, uh, I'm dead to the world, or the world is dead to me. Yeah, the world is dead to me. This world doesn't bother me. What the world, my God, the fads and phases that the world goes through, I can skip that. I can bypass that. You know, some people got to be in the in crowd. Lord, help me tell you, I done lost some folks. Yeah, some people just, whatever the world does, they've got to do it. Whatever the latest fad or trend is, they got to follow through. If this group, the, you know, the popular group is doing that, we do that. When are you going to walk away from the world? When are you going to separate yourself from the things of the world and say, you know what, for God I live and for God I'll die. When are you going to say, the things I used to do, help me teach, I don't do no more. There's been a change in my life. 
When are you going to say, I've decided to follow Jesus? No turning back. No t Wait a minute, Pastor. You can still have fun. What is fun? Let's talk today. Fun and excitement. I've done it all, but I've discovered that when I honor God and obey God, oh, that's joy right there. That's exciting to me because I get to sit back and see the handwork of God in and through my life, even when I'm down, even when I'm wrong, even when I'm at my lowest, even when I'm cumbered, encumbered by grief, I still see the hand of God working in and through my life. Why? Because I love him and because the world is dead to me. And he says, I'm dead to the world. The world don't love me. My God, John says, the world loveth his own. And the love of the world when you are engrossed in it, you don't have the love of the Father. You don't love God. You can't love God and love the world. Mm -mm. Paul says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. He says, wherefore, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord. I'm sick and tired of ministries telling us it's not what you do, it's how you do it. You can go out there and be a part of that. You just, you know, oh my God, that's foolish then. There must be a separation. How, do, how is the world going to tell us from them? I, I, see, this ain't the, I know other people are going to turn me off. How can you say I love God with every part of me and every time the world turns around with something new, you're there. You're in it. You, you, oh, come on. Mm -hmm. what, what's the use of me being a Christian is that if there's no difference. Can I teach? If there's no difference between me and the world, I can hang that title Christian up and never pick it up again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, are you with me? He says, I glory in the cross. He said, but the world is dead to me and I'm dead to the world. My God. God, when are you going to reckon yourself to be dead to the world where the world and all of its issues don't bother you anymore? You've been there, done that. God brought you from that. Why go back? Jesus talked about it. He said, like, you like a dog that's returned to his vomit. Did you catch that? When a dog throws up, sometimes you watch a dog go back and lick it back up. Oh, my God. So it is when God purges us from our mess, from our sins, we go back and lick it back, take it back up like God never changed us, like God never cleansed us. Come on. If you're clean, stay clean. God's job is to clean you. Your job is to stay clean. Let me move on from there. Good God. He says, watch this. Verse number 15. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Who cares, he says. If your foreskin has been cut away. Oh, who cares if it hadn't? That doesn't get you any brownie points with the Lord. Help me teach. That was for a particular day and a particular time. Some things, let me get in trouble. Some things that God did with Israel has nothing to do with us. Are oh, you hearing me? If you want to get circumcised, he says, circumcise the, the skin of your heart. Take off that veil of hatred. Take off that veil of unforgiveness. Take off that veil of, of being lost, being in your sins. Take that off, the, off your heart. Don't worry about the other parts. Y'all with me here? And so he says, circumcision doesn't give you any props and all it does uncircumcision. So you can go to the left and say, you know what? If you ain't circumcised, you're not, with, you're not of God. And others say, well, I don't have to be circumcised. We're on the grave. We, we are of the Lord. No, watch it. You don't get any uh, 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 ways made with God, any brownie points again with God just by being legalistic. Are you with me? And so uh, he says, they, 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 he say, but what gets God's attention is when you are a new creature. Can I get somebody to say new creature? Oh, my God. The, the true mark of being, one of the true marks of being a Christian is when you can look back and say, I know I've been changed. Uh -huh. And I don't mean breaking a few habits. I mean when your attitude and your desires, nobody can tempt you with the things of, of the world and, and you fall to it. Come on. When, when, when your chief motive is to honor God more than anybody, listen, uh, churches, Church buildings are closed now, but just think about it. And that's why I'm not, I'm not stressing over it, because a lot of folk, when the church building were open, they found other things to do. Now they're crying because the church building are closed. No, when you could, you wouldn't. Now that you can't, you want to. Oh, I don't think I could say that again. 
Uh-huh. See, so, so you honor God all the time. You must be a new creature in Christ Jesus, new creation. You, you're new now. Walk in the newness of life. Walk in the great things of God. Walk in obedience and loving God. Oh, my God. There must be a line of demarcation between the world and the church, the world and the body of Christ. Come on, y'all. It's got to be. Who can tell the difference? Oh, my God. Yeah. And so he says, a new creature, a new creature, a new creature. Make sure that you have been changed. Changed. Can you remember the time when Christ came into your life? Can you? Let, let's be, let's talk. Can you remember when you uh, became born again? Okay, let's chart your life. Look back at when Christ came into your life and look at now and see is there any growth? Is there any change? Is there any Christ-likeness? Talk to me. Well, I don't hate anybody. Sometimes it's not what you're not doing. Sometimes it's what you're doing. I don't commit adultery. I don't, I'm not a homosexual. I'm not a whore. I'm not a gambler. I'm not a liar. I'm not a dick. But what are you? What are you? See, when God takes stuff out of your life, he replaces it with something that looks more like him. Somebody right. When God takes anything out of your life, he replaces it with more of what looks like him. We ought to be mirroring Christ. Did you catch that? We ought to look like him. We ought to walk like him. We ought to talk like him. And it, again, it has nothing to do with the uh, old English uh, words, uh, uh, Anglo-Saxon words that we use, the D's and the D's and the Woodies and the Cooties and, you know, uh, uh, hitherto and fo No, 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 no. That's the old King's English. That's not how Jesus actually talked. Let me help you right quick. Uh, the King James Version is not the original version. A version. I want to help you. So, so get off of that. You got to live it like you are actually uh, God's child, which you are. You got to live it on your level. What do you mean? Let me clarify that. I'm in the t in in 2020. You know, I don't have to use uh, cometh here and would it thou and no 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 no. I I I I do what I know to do. That's right. Are you, did you catch that? I do what I know to do that's right. You know, you're not all boxed in and, 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 and locked in and, 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 and encumbered with, with laws. And do. Listen, the, this, this is how you figure out, and I've been teaching this for years, what is right and what is wrong. Ask yourself, is God going to get any glory from what I'm saying? Is God going to get any glory from what I'm doing or what I'm thinking or where I'm going? How am I honoring God? Oh, my God. Before you eat it, before you drink it, before you smoke it, before you go there, before you uh, agree to it, before you engage in it, ask yourself, before you answer people, is what I'm getting ready to say, is what I'm getting ready to do, is it going to bring glory to God? If not, let it go. Let it go. Time is too short. Are you with me? And so uh, he says in verse number uh, 16, and I'm coming uh, to, to the close of this chapter, really. Verse number 16. As many as walk according to this rule, peace be unto them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. Now, watch, watch what he says. Watch what he says. When you walk according to the rule. What rule? The rule of being a new Christ, creature. The rule of being a Christian. The rule of loving God. The rule of treating people right. The rule of making sure that God is pleased with everything you do and say. That's the rule. The Christ-likeness. That's the rule. New creature. That, that, that's the rule. God is pleased with that rule. When you, when you walk according to the laws of Christ. Not the Judaistic laws. My God. Your head, ladies, got to be covered. Men, you have to have a suit on. Y'all help me teach. Uh, uh, you, you got to have, you know, your dress down to your ankles and your hair's got to be up in a bun and all this kind of stuff. That's legalism. Lord, help me. Now, let me be fair. Oh, you shout too fast. Let me be fair. All your stuff ought, ought not to be hanging out either. Uh-oh. It's so quiet up in there. 
you, sh you should be modest in your apparel. Your underwear and breasts and all that other kind of stuff shouldn't be showing. You shouldn't flex men, your muscles in front to be tempting people. You, uh, yeah, okay, come on, let's go. Uh, uh, but you got to make sure, yes, that you dress modestly to not cause others to sin. But at the end of the day, you're not wearing uh, clothes from your head to your toe to cover you up. So, you know, no, that's legalism. You can say what you want. That's legalism. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to teach that another time. He says, watch this. If you walk according to the rule, you have peace. A lot of us can't have peace because we don't live in peace. What does that mean? If you don't live in peace with God, you won't have peace in your spirit. If you don't live in peace with God or at peace with God, you won't have peace in your home. If you don't live in peace with God, your mind won't be at peace. Your my God, you've got to make sure you have peace. Get it right with God and everything else is going to get right. Can I, I know it's bad grammar, but it's good communication. Get it right with God and everything else is going to get right. Amen? Yeah. And, and he says, and mercy. You, you have peace? Here we go with that word again, mercy. Thank God for mercy. You know, when you are merciful to others, God is merciful to you. And, and I'm, I'm a recipient of God. I no, I haven't done it all right. You haven't done it all right. But we're here by the grace and mercy of God. Mercy holds back from us what we really deserve. My God, some of us walk around like we all that and then some. And we, you know, we the, we the walking Bible and, and, and we the epitome of, of Christianity. Just understand you're where you are by the grace and mercy of God. You can hang that facade up. You are only what you are because God allows you to be what you are. Amen, somebody. My God, he says, in mercy upon the Israel of God, the people of God is the word he used there. Make sure that you're God's child. You can be, you can be a member of any church you choose to be a member of, but if you're not a member of the body of Christ, you're just a part of a legal system. Uh-huh. We take communion on this day. We dress like this on this Sunday. We... We stand up here. We sit down here. We kneel here. We do this. We do that. You're just going through legalism if you're not a part of the body of Christ. Jesus would tell Mr. Nicodemus, a Pharisee, and theologians say he was the president of the Sanhedrin Council, which consisted of 72 men. He, he, he kept the law. He knew the Torah. Listen, he carried out temple duties. And Jesus would say unto him, you must be born again. So guess what? I'm going to shock you when I tell you. All of your church attendants did not, uh, did not say that you have been born again. But because you're born again, you attend church. I, we, gotta get, we have to get it right. I don't have to go to church to be saved. I, I'm so sick of that excuse. Everybody in, in church ain't saved. I'm sick of that one too. You just do it right. Oh, see, I, I had a conversation with somebody uh, a few years ago, and they said, well, I don't need to come to church because everybody in there is hypocrites. I said, well, won't you come and help us and show us how to do it right? Y'all ain't going to help me. Since you're condemning everybody in the church, you, you come and you show us how to do it right. No, see, that's a cop-out. That's an excuse not to be committed to the things of God. I'm here to tell you, when you're God's child, you love God. You want to be around the people of God. You want to, help me teach, you want to be uh, active in the ministry and in the things of God. You're not a renegade Christian. Oh, help me teach. And so, y'all, yeah, he says, watch this in verse number 17. He said, from now on, let no man trouble me. For I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I, I, look, my God, let me get here. Paul says, I'm sick and, tired, sick and tired of having to validate my apostleship, my apostolic calling. He says, now I'm telling you, all that I've told you about the legalism and and, and, and the effects of legalism, he says, and how it's not prospering, uh, the Israel of God, the people of God, he said, don't y'all bother me. Paul had to constantly defend his position in Christ, especially that of an apostle. Because, you know, he wasn't one of the original 12. He wasn't one that actually walked in ministry for three and a half years with Christ. And, so he, and, and then we know his history. We know his background. Paul was one that persecuted the church. And so when he got or uh, became converted, God uh, had to reassure him that he was actually called 
by God, and he had to reassure the people that he wasn't the same old Saul he used to be. Lord, help me teach here. And so now, watch it. I'm going somewhere. Now he says, don't, don't, don't let no, don't, he says, let me put it in 20. Don't come at me anymore with this foolishness. I'm, a, I'm an apostle, and you can't do nothing about it. Oh, a lot of times pastors have to defend their pastoral calling. He ain't no pastor. He ain't no real pastor. He do this. And he, look, Paul says, don't come at us like that. He says, you know what? Because I got proof in my body. I bear about in my body the marks of our Lord. He said, I've suffered for this cause. I paid the price. He says, I've been beaten several times, stoned and left for dead. I've been, my God. He says, I've been uh, 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 left alone, abandoned. He said, sometimes I like to walk all by myself. I've been let down over the wall in the basket to keep from being stoned. He says, don't come at me. I got marks to prove that I've suffered for the cause and for the cross of Christ. What signs do you have to indicate that you suffered for Christ? Oh, Jesus. If you're a real child of God, let me help you contrary to modern ministry teaching. You will suffer for Christ. This is a journey that does involve, it's not an all-suffering journey, but it involves suffering. Every now and then, your heart will be broken. You'll be laid wide open. You'll be persecuted for the things of God. Don't fool yourself. The Bible says, beware when all men speak well of you. You know, when you're the popular kid on the block, something wrong. When everybody got something good to say about you, you're compromising. Teach, Pastor. You, yeah, you're not telling the truth. And I'm, 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 I thank God that I've learned down through the years to let the word say what it says. If it hit, fine. If it encouraged, fine. If it convicts, fine. But the word is going to do what it's got to do, and I'm not compromising or backing up off it. My God. And so, you know, I'm not the popular kid on the block, but I thank God for, that I'm right with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Preachers and pastors, let me encourage you. Stand up for what's right. Keep standing. Don't look for people to follow you. Make sure they're following Jesus. And if God be for you, or they ain't just for preachers and pastors, that's for those of you who love the Lord. If God be for you, my God. Don't, I say again, don't count numbers. Make the numbers count. How many are committed to the things of God? Watch and see. Be fruit inspectors. Are they loving? Are they walking in peace? Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. He said, don't, from, from now on, don't come at me. Don't bother me. I'm not defending this anymore. And if, my God, if you're God's child, if you've been anointed and appointed by God, you don't have to, you don't need any validation for that. You don't need to stand in defense of that. Your works, your life, and your ministry will speak for itself. The impact that you're having on the lives of others will speak. We have, we have come up now with too many gimmicks, and I'm going here, and, and, and too many schemes trying to get people to pack our churches, to follow us, we need a barrage of people to say we're successful. My God, if one get changed, if one life get touched, if one person come over to the Lord's side, thank God for that. Shout off for that. Because God is still saving souls and he's still turning people around. Are you with me? Mm, mm, mm. My God. He said, I bear by, listen, I've suffered, Paul says, for the cause of Christ. I've suffered. And I thank God I've suffered for the cause of Christ. Been lied on. Been, been lied to. Been, been undermined. Been set up. But you know what? I'm still here. I'm still standing. Aren't you? Come on. If you can testify just for a minute, aren't you still here? When you gave your life to Christ, didn't you feel, Mike, watch me here. Didn't you catch hell from your family? And from your so-called friends, somebody ought to witness and uh, testify right there. Yeah. Uh, some of you, when you got serious about God and wanted to give your life for Christ, your family looked at you cross-eyed. You don't know. See, you went to that church, they done brainwashed you. Oh, help me teach. Mm -hmm. Y'all following that man, that woman teaching y'all. Say amen, somebody. Mm -hmm. You done read that Bible so much, you're going crazy. Oh, I've heard it all. Come on. Mm-hmm. Watch. And then we give more credence 
and more credibility to those who do some dastardly things more than we give to those who are following Christ and leading us in the things of God. Oh, I just said something right there. We praise those who, who cause others to be murdered. We praise those whose songs, I'm in trouble, whose songs degrade us. We praise them. Yet we'll ostracize and criticize and crucify those who labor in the word. So Paul says, don't trouble me. Don't bother me. Get out of my face, he says. I am so glad that I've never needed the validation of anybody. I am who I am, and I am what I am by the grace of God. Where I, where I make it is by God's grace. Where I miss it, I'm trusting God's mercy. Y'all ain't got to help me. Let me close here. He says, brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. He starts out by saying brethren. Then he ends by saying brethren. <laughs> he says, just in case you missed it, I'm talking to God's people. And that's where I am today. I'm encouraging God's people. You keep living like you're living. Keep living God's, the life that God calls you to live. Let people talk about you. Listen, let me help you real quick. I thank God for folk that talk. When you talked about, you thought about. Mm. Folk have you on their mind that you don't even know anything about. <laughs> are you with me? And stop entertaining what folk are saying about you anyway. Tune that out. Turn it off. As long as you're not giving them the negative to talk about, praise the Lord. And if you are and they come back at you, that's an invitation to change. Teach, Pastor. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God. And he uses in, 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 in a, uh, two verses prior, mercy. Then he comes, he always tags those two together, grace and mercy. Grace, God's unmerited favor. Mercy, God holding back from us what we do deserve. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. So be it, he says. I am so glad today that I walk in grace. I'm a recipient of grace and mercy. I'm blessed like that. Got nothing to do with material for that. Oh, I'm blessed materially. I thank God for it. But, but you know what? If I never, ever got another dollar, if I never, ever was able to enjoy the house I'm living in or the vehicles I ride in, I thank God that I'm, I'm blessed to receive God's grace and mercy. Because grace and mercy will open doors for you that's been slammed in your face. Are you hearing me? Yeah, the grace and mercy will get you favor with God. And if God favors you, he will bring you into places you didn't even qualify to be. You ever look, I'm through, you ever look <laughs> at your life and folks said you wouldn't, you weren't going to, you wouldn't amount to anything, you weren't going to make it, and you look back and them folks struggling, to God be the glory. Mm -hmm. You got to be careful what you say about people because it has a boomerang effect. What, the negativity you speak on other people's lives will, will take over your life. You got to be careful. The same people who we look down on right now, you're looking up at them. Mm -hmm. You need them. It ain't over till God says it's over. Whoever God has his hand on, nobody can block or stop their success. God bless you real good. We're finished, thank God, with this sixth chapter of Paul's letter to the Galatians. I pray and believe that these last couple of sessions has blessed your heart. I want you to be encouraged by the things of God. Thank God for the truth of the word of God. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you, what, free. Too many folk in bondage. That's why I teach it like I teach it. That's why I come straight uh, with the word of God, because folk need to be set free and delivered. Amen. And so thank God for the word. Thank God for Jesus Christ who makes all of this possible. Thank God for his spirit who's bringing the word out like it needs to be brought out. And I need to say this real quick. Whatever, however you're blessed by this ministry, however you're blessed by this teaching, to God be the glory. It's all because of him. If, if it wasn't for him, you wouldn't be looking at me right now. You wouldn't even be hearing uh, words coming out of my mouth through the power of God. It wouldn't even be like that. So thank God for him. I give God the glory. Uh, certainly, we are concerned, as always, about those who have not been to the cross, who have not bowed under the cross, who have not been washed in the blood. 
My friend, the cross is still relevant today. The cross is still powerful today. The blood of Jesus is still washing people. The power of the Holy Spirit is still drawing people to Christ. If you yield, he will draw you, bring you to him. He will wash you and cleanse you if you allow him. So right now, I want to pray with you, and you repeat with me, or uh, after me, rather, what I'm about to say in prayer. And I promise you, if you're sincere, you have brand new life, a new beginning. Dear God, I confess that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died, was buried, and on the third day, you raised him from the dead. I ask you now to come into my life, take control, and I thank you that I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. By faith in Jesus' name, Amen. God bless you real good. God keep you. I am excited. You may not ever contact me, but I'm excited that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank God and to him be the glory. I want to uh, pray also for our dear, dear member, Brother Lucas McGuffey. Let's lift him up in prayer. Please, I need every prayer warrior. Lift him and his family up in prayer. Uh, we want uh, from a uh, member of St. Mark. And I want to pray for Sister Lily Russell, a member of the Mount Olive Baptist Church. I need all of you. Thank God she's progressing well. Had a chance to talk to her. Thank God for uh, his healing power manifesting in her situation. Uh, keep her and in your prayer. Keep Brother McGuffey in your prayer. Uh, we want to pray for the Thomas family of, of the Edgar uh, area. We want to lift that family up in prayer. We understand that God is still sovereign. He does what he wants to do, how he wants to do it, whenever he wants to do it. Uh, it may pain us now it may hurt us now but God is still in charge of every situation we want to lift them up in prayer and there are others whose name we cannot and may not call but I want you to know we're bringing you to the throne as well dear God we want to thank you thank you for this awesome word session thank you for touching as many lives as lives as you are and have touched we thank you dear God that your word will not return unto you void but it will accomplish that which you purpose that every ear that heard received and transformation is consuming the life of the of those that believe thank you for the salvation of those that got saved today and through in and through other ministries thank you for their salvation God we bless you we pray for every pastor every ministry that's honoring you and serving and worshiping and praising you and and giving you all the glory. We thank you for them that you are empowering them in these last and evil days to keep standing and being a beacon light in our dark world. We pray for our world that you would step in, dear God, that you would make it what you want it to be, that you would get glory, especially in our country. We thank you, oh God, that you are causing those that do not obey you to turn from their wicked ways. We bless you now. Father, we pray for all sick and shed in, that you be the doctor that diagnose and treat their case and empower doctors and nurses and all those medical in the medical field to properly diagnose and treat their case. Father, we thank you for those who are in bereavement, that you're lifting them up, oh God, that you're causing the, the comfort of the Holy Spirit to sweep over their souls. We pray for those who are incarcerated, those who are institutionally bound, those who are outdoors, those who have suffered loss from the hurricanes, those who have suffered loss from life's issues. We pray for them that through these situations, they can see more of you and you can see, oh, you can bless them in special ways. We thank you for the victory and we bless you in Jesus' name. Bless every giver, those that give and sow seed into the ministry, into my life. I pray a hundredfold blessing that they will see the return not many days from now. And we bless you in Jesus' name. Every believer said amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. I want to thank you. Last week's lesson we talked about uh, blessing the teacher and several of you reached out and I thank you, thank you, thank you. I, re I, I, I thank God for you. I ask God, I remembered you in my prayer. I ask God to bless you with a hundredfold blessing. Won't always come back in money, but good God, the blessing that will come will flood into your life. I thank God for you for blessing the ministries, blessing St. Mark, blessing Mount Olive. We don't teach to get money, but it takes money for us to do what we're doing. But we thank God for your gifts through Givele Five from uh, contacting our secretaries, getting your tithes and offerings into the churches. I shared this with somebody the other day who's not even a member of neither, either one of these churches, uh, of, of the church that we lead. Uh, and, and thank God for his, he, him encouraging me. The man lives in Florida. He's a member of one, of, uh, he's a member of, of, a family member of, of, of the members at one of our churches. And he said this to me, he said, 
Uh, somebody asked him, he he's, works in the office or the deacon at the church, and he said, somebody asked him, are we still supposed to pay our tithes? Are we sp still supposed to give? He said, the church still got have obligations. He said, we still got uh, obligations we have to meet. So with that in mind, please keep supporting your ministry where you serve. Uh, the ministry must go on, and we thank God. Uh, folk are saying, you know, well, the pastors ain't doing that. We're preaching and teaching the word. That's what we call to do. When you call, we pray for you. If we can get to you, we can. But if not, we allow God to use us in whatever vein he does. So make sure you're still doing what you're supposed to do. God bless you real good. And uh, don't forget, every Saturday from 11 to 2, uh, you get to uh, register to vote at Choice Marketplace. Uh, contact Sister Georgia. Uh, I'm telling you. Uh, if you get there, they will register you to vote. We need to make our voices heard. Uh, and y'all know what tomorrow is. Tomorrow is what? Labor Day. My God, I'm telling you, a week to two weeks from Labor Day, we're going to be in trouble if we don't handle it right. We're going to be in, in great trouble if we don't handle it right. If we don't uh, uh, follow the CDC uh, guidelines, if we don't keep masking up, if we have gatherings, uh, large gatherings without masks and, and you know all of, I'm telling you we're going to be in trouble as a as a parish as a community as families as a state we're going to as a country we're going to be in trouble I'm pleading with us we y'all I see progress but it's not at the point where we can let our guards down I'm warning terribly to get back into the fellowship with the body of Christ. I'm wanting to be able to go certain places and do certain things, but it can't happen until we get all of this mess pretty much out of the way. Let's help ourselves so that God can help us. Mask up, social distance, keep away from the large crowd. We're getting, I'm watching, we're getting too comfortable, and this is going to come back to bite us. God bless you real, I know you're tired of me, and I'm tired of saying it. So, uh, help us and we won't have to say it anymore. Amen. God bless you. Don't forget to vote. Don't forget to vote. Don't forget to vote. When early voting comes, please vote. Your vote makes the difference. Though you're tired of the unjust judges and you, we elect them. We elect them. And, and if we don't vote for them, we elected them. So make sure you put your voice out there. God bless you real good and may the Lord keep you is our prayer. As always and I'm through, I love you. Be strong in the Lord. God bless you real good. Don't forget you're loved. Amen.